Welcome to the Mystic Media Channel. I'm your host, Rabina Rastavan, a.k.a. The Realist Astrologer. And tonight, in the wake of the recent news involving Bobby Valentino, I am going to get into his chart to see if he does have an attraction to transgender women. Now, if you're not aware, Bobby Valentino was caught on tape leaving the room of a transgender prostitute. And basically, this transgender prostitute uh, exposed him. It looked like he tried to skip out on this prostitute for not and not paying uh, uh, her for her services. So uh, I just want to get into his chart to see if he is actually inclined to go that way. So Bobby Valentino was born on February 27th, 1980. Now that makes him a Pisces. Uh, being born on the 27th, that breaks down to nine. So that's Mars energy. So that makes him a very sexual Pisces. And also a Pisces that is a go-getter, that can be very aggressive, that basically likes to live life on his own terms. Now, to reinforce that, he has his Mercury in Pisces in trying to Uranus in Scorpio. That's a person that likes to walk to the beat of their own drum. Um, you know, they could be rather rebellious at times, but they turn that rebellion into something that works out in their favor. His Uranus is in Scorpio at the 25th degree. 25 breaks down to 7. That's Neptune energy. So there's some secrecy he's working with there. And to reinforce the secrecy, he has his Mercury in Pisces and square to Neptune and Sagittarius. So that could produce somebody that is prone to telling lies, trying to cover up the truth. Um, there's something about them that they try to keep under wraps. Also, uh, he has his son opposing Mars and Jupiter in Virgo. So his son is in Pisces and it's opposing Mars and Jupiter in Virgo. Now that right there produces somebody that... Um, they have like two different sides to their identity and they're not really comfortable with the side that can deal with the sexuality part of them because Mars deals with one sexuality, sexual attraction, what have you. Mars at the fourth degree conjoined to Jupiter and Virgo can deal with being sexually attracted uh, to people that are different from the norm because Jupiter deals with that which goes beyond the norm. Jupiter could deal with that which is extraordinary, that which is extra. And if we're talking about Virgo, Virgo could deal with that young type of look, uh, that waifish look where it's like petite, almost like elfin. So right there, that shows you that Bobby Valentino is attracted to a petite type, and he's also looking for perfection. So with that, he might find that the women that are checking for him aren't the type of person that he is attracted to sexually because they are just not that perfection. They just do not have that general state qua that he's looking for. Now he had this song back in the day that I used to love. It was, uh, it went like, um, Ooh, girl, tell me, how did you get that in those jeans? Now that I think about it, I'm thinking maybe he was talking about transgender females because I'm like, how did he, how did you get that in the gym? Maybe he was talking about how did you hide that uh, dick and make it seem like you're a female. So I was just like, wow, the song must have a double on Tondra. I mean, it could be, especially with his Mercury and Square to Neptune. He could be uh, sending mixed signals and all that. He also has his moon in Leo. It's in Square to Chiron. That produces somebody that is rather different. Um, you know, there's just something about them that's odd, that's unusual, something that goes against the grain. They try to buck the system in some way. And since we're talking about the moon, that could deal with the type of women that he's attracted to. Moon and Leo. Leo is a masculine sign. It deals with men. Also, he has, uh, there's something else. Yeah, he, his Mercury is opposed to Apollo. The asteroid Apollo could deal with where you are hard-headed, where you keep on hitting your head against a brick wall, where you keep on having to learn the same lesson over and over again. So when you combine that with Mercury square Neptune, that can deal with him trying to be undercover and him getting caught out just like how he did with this recent episode. And there's another video surfacing online with him dancing with another transgender female. Now his Mars conjoined to Jupiter is at the fourth degree and the fourth degree can deal with unconventional um, appetites, um, unusual sexual attraction. And like I said, when you add that Jupiter in the mix, 
Jupiter basically is like where you're like very tolerant of different types of sexuality when you combine it with Mars or it could deal with where you want a little something extra. You want some pork and beans with your taco or in place of your taco. Um, so his Mars conjoined to Jupiter is opposing the asteroid Bacchus. Bacchus deals with what causes you to become intoxicated, what is like a drug to you, what is very addicting to you. So this tells me that he's addicted to those lady boys. He can't leave them alone. And Pisces is a very addictive sign. So he's naturally prone to be addicted to something. So he has both his sun and Mercury in Pisces. Then his Mercury is in Quincunx to Pluto. That could deal with him having these urges that can really get in the way of him trying to live his life, like basically uh, live his life accordingly, according to his reputation with that Mercury Quincunx Pluto. Again, like Neptune, Pluto is a very secretive planet. It could deal with things that are undercover, things that where he's, you know, afraid of something being exposed. Pluto is in Libra. Libra deals with relationships. Also the opposite sex. And if we're talking about Pluto, Pluto can deal with transformation. Pluto is one of the indicators of uh, transgender attraction, actually. So uh, with his Mercury and Quinn comes to Pluto, that could deal with him struggling with that attraction that he has. Now, the clincher is his south node. Now, his south node is at the 28th degree of Aquarius. Now, in my um, experience as an astrologer, I know that the South Node in Aquarius can produce people that have a same-sex attraction. And this deals with their past life profile. So he definitely has that. Uh, he definitely has the indicators in his chart. Um, he also has his Venus in Aries opposing Pluto in Libra. So that could deal with him being in relationships where there is something undercover. It, I mean, in its most literal sense, it can deal with lady boys, transgender females that he's attracted to. Venus deals with attraction. Venus and Aries, that's masculine. That's males. Aries is a male, male uh, sign. Um, and then Pluto and Libra. Again, Pluto and Libra deals with relationships, but it can also be one of the main indicators of transgender attraction. He also has his Saturn square Neptune. Neptune is conjoined to the fixed star Ras al Hag, and that can deal with uh, mixing with people that are going to expose you or people that are not all that they seem, people that are shady, people that you shouldn't trust. So he definitely has the setup for getting into a situation exactly like this. And then that Venus opposition Pluto also deals with the extortion aspect. So when he says now he's come out saying that he was extorted and I do believe he's telling the truth, but he's not telling the full truth. His Mercury square Neptune being dishonest, covering up the truth. Basically, it looks like he's being extorted for more money than what he actually paid. So it looks like he's been paying these chicks with dicks. And he uh basically one of them, the one that videotaped them probably was like, uh-uh, honey, you got to come up with more. You're going to have to put some money in my account every month or every week. I want a BMW. I want this. I want that. I want some furs. I want some diamonds. And he was probably like, oh, hell no. But with that Venus opposition Pluto, Moon Square Chiron, there's no way he could come out of this clean. Like he's set up to get caught up. So, uh, oh, and he also has Moon Sesame Square Neptune, too. That could deal with um, uh, being attracted to women that are, you know, either not women or they're artificial. There's something fake about them. There's something unreal. There's something undercover because, again, Neptune deals with secrecy. His moon is in parallel to Eros. And remember, I said his moon is in Leo. It's parallel to Eros. And Eros is at what? The 27th degree of Aries. That is double male energy right there. 27, you can almost look at it as a penis because it's the number of the scepter. So it definitely has a phallic component to it. So the fact that he's born on the 27th, his moon is parallel Eros. Eros is at the 27th degree of Aries. Basically, that's all I need to see. And then, like I said, add in that south node in Aquarius. That says it all. Um, but what? Oh, and here's the real clincher. Now, his life path. Is a 29. Now, if you tuned into my uh, recent Ace of Cups radio show this past Saturday, 
I talked about the 29 and I talked about how it could bring issues with gender, sexuality, where there's often something where you're trying to cover up something. You're trying to operate undercover. Oftentimes you're caught in the middle. Um, there's some type of internal conflict going on. So the fact that his life path is 29, that says a lot. Uh, basically, oh, and I forgot to mention too, his south known in Aquarius is in square to that Uranus and Scorpio. Again, Uranus is at the 25th degree of Scorpio. Again, that's more secrecy. South known in Aquarius just naturally sets him up to be, uh, to have that same sex attraction. So he was basically born this way. Um, but not saying that he had to go that route, but with everything, you know, taken into account that Mars conjunct Jupiter at the fourth degree of Virgo. Again, Virgo is a perfectionistic sign. So basically he wants perfection and he might basically only be able to see perfection in lady boys. So that's Bobby Valentino. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, basically he has a bad, he's addicted to transgender females and he can't get enough. But you know, like that song he had, Slow Down, it looked like he got to slow down at this point. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Also, um, me and the ladies of the Cosmic Council are putting on an eclipse party that's going to be on August 7th. I'm going to leave the link in the description. So uh, please sign up. We only have nine seats left. So uh, it's going to be live. We're going to let you know how this uh, upcoming total solar eclipse is going to affect you. So if you are uh, interested in learning how this eclipse is going to go down in your life, you definitely want to sign up. And if you would like a reading, just go to my website at rabina.com. Peace and many blessings.